Hey guys, how are you? Shazada here. So, uh, with the uh, like with the new generation of Ryzen, a lot of users might be seeing that they are facing like higher temps. So, even with the like a better, beefier coolers, they still have like issues with the temps or running like on idle. They're above seventy while gaming. They're hitting close to ninety. Um, 84, 85, 80 something is like normal. I've seen like when I was running tests on the sensors that on the hardware info that it was almost close to 90, not all the times, depending on your room temperature as well, how hot is around you that can impact it as well. And it also depends on what kind of cooler you're using. Obviously, if you're using liquid cooling, the temperature will be a bit more um, cooler. Obviously, if you're using the old way of like a just normal fan cooling then it, it the temperatures will be a bit higher but it just depends right so what you can do is um it might impact your performance a little bit by not uh, it or it might not at all right but you will see the huge notice in the perform uh, the temperatures of these chips so like without doing any intervals my chip uh, like when i was on oil league it was above 70 while i was gaming it was close to 80 to 90 as i understand um i'm running h150 rgb so this is a 360 uh, 360 um, aio while on the previous chip i was running ryzen uh 9500x with the kraken x62 but I also undervolted on that, so obviously I was getting like a lower temps. But while what was on idle, I was getting close to 45 ish, right? And while on uh, 45 to let's say 55, it was between, it wasn't always like static, but it was close to 40, like late 40s to early 50s. And then on the loads, especially if you are playing any games which are using like a single core a lot and then the, there's a spike then the temperatures would or like heavy load because on heavy load it wouldn't go higher compared to like a single core is going faster or like higher so it was always in 60s maybe once in a while it would touch 70 74 ish but it would never go above 75 so um i would advise doing the same thing with your chip as well okay so what you will need to do first is you need to shut down your machine we're gonna do that Okay. You can restart it as well, but it's just like for me, I'm just gonna do the first step and then we're gonna log into your BIOS. So we are in the BIOS now. So you can see it's 31. So you will need to go to, uh, you can press F7 or you can go to advanced mode. Okay, the first thing is like here, if you have wanna do some uh, tweaking with your uh, RAMs, if you want to have like XMP, uh, DOCP profiles, AMD's DOCP, like it's X, it's the same thing. It's Intel X, XMP, uh, AMD DOCP. So if you want to have set up your profiles, you want to do that. I would uh, always suggest like doing that, especially with the new Ryzen uh, chip uh, card. Uh, sorry, the Ryzen uh, chipsets. Yes, it, it has always been the case. But anyways, so let's go to advanced. We're going to scroll down. We're going to go to advanced. Uh, AMD overclocking. We'll come to that. We can accept that. So here, you will need to scroll down to precision boost overdrive. Then, uh, because I've already set it up, so I'm just showing you. From you, you'll get the first option. It will be like blank here. So here, you will select advanced because I think it, for you it will be disabled at that time. So what we'll do is um, and we put advanced now. Second, PBO limit. So PBO limit is like it is for your chip. Like the simplest way is like if you enable it. You can put like auto ones, you can put for the motherboard ones. So it's like your power, it, it, does it like go draw higher power? Does it doesn't draw anything? Leave it auto for a system to decide. You can do manual one, you can leave your motherboard to decide or you can just disable it. I would say like disable it because we don't want it to go higher. We don't want, because we're facing the issue with the, you know, it's already drawing a lot of power. It is running harder, so we don't want that. Okay. So now we have disabled that. For other things, that's it come here that like the last thing is curve optimizer so we're going to select that so this is um this is where you it depends on what chip you have so what we don't for the curve optimizer is we want 
this to apply to all the cores instead of you can do parkour you can go it just depends but i was like just make it your life easy so it's all cores so curve optimizer uh the ryzen 9 uh 5900 or the 5 gen 5th gen right easiest way that would go to 30 apparently the ryzen 9 gen can go a bit higher 40 or 45 i don't remember correctly i was looking somewhere but i still remember like 30 was the one so you will need to make sure instead of positive we're gonna go to negative so these are the small increments so the reason i'm not doing like a lot of stress tests with you or benchmarks with you because all the chips they are not same so in your instance you might get different scores in your instance it the 30 might not work for you the high-end chips might be able to like the ryzen 9 it might be able to go to 30 or 40 but the 5950x might not be able to do that because they are really optimized chips while similar case like with the seventh or fifth gen uh, of, uh, models so you can try whatever is best for you it's more of a like a this is the like these are the things you can try with this you will see like it won't impact your performance much you can start from 30 you can like i would say like what you do is uh, do a cinebench test on your chip at the start without doing anything right keep an eye on your temperatures and then keep an eye on the score you're getting then you do negative one then you start from 30 then you do some sort of a stress test to, to just make sure your system is stable because it might be able to you know it run at that time but while your game are doing random thing it might be crash out so you need to find stability and that's on you so obviously that can take some time but i would promise you in long term it is much better and so worth it so start from 30 you can look up with the new gen it might be even 40 so start from the extreme and then go whatever works for you if you your temps drop from 70 to even 60 it's not worth it so yes and in some instances you might even see your chip performing much better compared to earlier because it, earlier it was hitting the, thr uh, throttle, th the thermal throttle limit now it has sort of a more space so it might be even performing a bit better so i'm not gonna make any changes and so it's because we haven't done any changes so for me i'm just gonna exit that so i would highly suggest doing this and try whatever works for you so run stress tests run scores if the score is let's say like you know in like you like sort of like a user error like it's like 50 to 100 down in long terms i would say it wouldn't matter that much you won't notice the performance obviously if you are seeing like the score takes a major chunk then there could be some issues but with this you won't see the notice in performance that much and the temperatures will be a lot down yeah that's it. If you have any questions, do let me know. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.